Uh, good morning everybody, uh, welcome back to the kitchen. Um, I told you the other day that we would make scones so that you could have them with your jam. So, um, this is a no-brainer, super easy, whip them up quickly when the visitors come. Okay, so I've got a cup of plain flour in here and I've got, I'm going to use two cups of self-raising flour. And in an ideal world, I would sieve it, but I haven't got time, so it should work. It usually does. So, one cup of plain flour, two cups of self-raising flour. And I like quite a bit of butter. <laughs> Not surprised, are you? In um, my scones, so I am going to... I don't know how much that would be. That would probably be about maybe 250 grams here. Somebody's like munted it as they've got their toast out and stuff. So all I'm going to do is break it up into small pieces. Now my friend Louise, she grates hers. She grates hers into the scones, which is really pretty genius, really. Um, but I'm just going to cut it in here. Uh, that's probably, I'm going to use uh, probably about 200 grams of butter or thereabouts. Okay, and I'm just going to cut it into pieces and I'm going to rub it in with my hands. Okay? Not that much. That looks good. Okay, so just swish it in with your hands until it's... It'll, it'll look like breadcrumbs at the end or thereabouts, so it'll be quite yellow because of the butter. So give me a few minutes and I'll do this and then um, I'll show you what it looks like. In the meanwhile, I'm going to get Brooklyn also, because I like cheese scones. Um, I'm going to get Brooklyn to grate about hmm, maybe a cup and a half of, of cheese, any sort of cheese that you've got. Okay, so I'll um, meet you back here in a few minutes. Look at this. So that's all the butter rubbed in. Okay. Just rubbed in with my hands. It's a really good hand exercise, actually. I think, I think my days of hand modelling are over. But I uh, see the burn on my hand that I got the other day. Eek. Okay. Anyway, right. That aside. So the flour's all done and it's ready. That took what five minutes? If that, if that. Brooklyn's. Ooh, she's really generous with her cheese. I'm thinking that's way more than a cup and a half. So we won't quite use that much. We'll use <laughs> that much. Okay. And then just toss it through. Grab me a knife, please, daughter. A knife? A butter um, knife? Yep. Just a bread and butter knife. Right. And I'm going to add milk. There's a bit of cheese. Chuck that in. Right. Right. Now, I'm just going to slowly add enough milk. So you're bright people, all right? There's no measurement to this. So that it combines it. Okay, and just use your knife, and we're just going to barely mix this, okay, just so that it's combined, and it makes a soft dough. So you don't want a sticky dough, you just want a soft dough. And that's probably all I need. Yep, that's it. Okay, so it should look like that. That's it. Okay, so give me a few minutes and I'm going to put it onto my floured bench and um, then I'll show you what that looks like in a mo. Okay. Alright, so here's my dough. Here. My sticky fingers. And all I'm going to do is just add a little bit more flour as I press it around and press it down. That is it. That is pretty much it. And then cut it into shapes. Now, if you want to be a bit of a purist and you want to make beautiful little round shapes and things like that, go for gold. Just don't forget, don't over mix this. This is not a bread. We don't need it. We've just barely mixed it in a bowl. And now we're going to chop it up into shapes so that we can stick it in the oven. The oven is heated already. It's on fan bake at 180 degrees. You knew that, didn't you? And um, and then I'm just going to chuck it in the oven. And I'll show you what it looks like in 10 minutes. Be prepared to be enthralled. So easy. So flipping easy. Um, something that I forgot to tell you is when you cut them up, make sure that they're even size, okay? If you've got one that's that size, it's going to take longer to cook than something that is that size, okay? So cut them up so that they're even and then um, just put them into the oven 
and hey presto, you're done. That is it. It's a no-brainer, mate. There is morning tea done. So if they say, oh, it's your turn to do morning tea for lunch or for, for at work and things like that, sorted. 10 minute job. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to put them in the oven and I'll show you what they look like when they're cooked, eh? Just while the scones are baking, they're going to take about 10 minutes, 15 minutes max. It's all, I go on colour rather than time. So when they're nice and golden brown. Anyway, um, we made some jam the other day. What I forgot to tell you, and here's our jam, totally set, which is great. Um, is when you're finished making your jam and when it's cooled down, wash your jars and things like that so you don't have an ant infest infestation. You don't want that. That's, that's like gross. When you wake up in the morning and your blinking bench is black with ants, that's, that's not cool. Um, so wash down your jars and don't forget to write down the date that you made your jam. Okay, so that you have a fair idea of which ones you need to use first. Okay, so the ones from January last year should be being used okay rather than the ones that you made the other day um the other thing is i've got a couple of other jam uh sorry scone recipes which are a no-brainer remember a few months and months ago when we made a yeast free bread and it was made out of self-raising flour and yogurt plain yogurt um that's unsweetened yogurt so you could use um two cups of self-raising flour and around maybe a cup and a half of um, of plain yogurt, unsweetened, and then you could add cheese to it. They would become a drop scone because they're really, really soft and they're, they're something that you can't mold like we did on the bench here, but they're really easy to make. The other thing that you can make is a recipe that I used to use years ago, and it's a two cups of, hang on, let me get this right, three cups of self-raising flour, a cup of cream and a cup of lemonade, okay, plain lemonade. Um, that's also really, really easy to make and it makes a really good scone, which is good even the next day because they're still quite soft. Um, so that's three cups of self-raising flour, a cup of cream and a cup of lemonade. So try those two. They're really good um, scone recipes as well. Um, so um, don't forget to keep things, keep buying things for your food storage cupboard. It is really, really important. Okay. The more you build up your food storage cupboard, the, the more that you're prepared for anything that might happen like eh, a pandemic. So um, keep doing things like jamming, making your jam. And um, and even though this wasn't super, it, it wasn't super cheap to make because we had to buy the fruit. Remember in summer when the fruit is free, you know, like that's growing off your trees and things like that, then that's the time to make them. All because it's winter here in Northland, now's the time to be making things like marmalade jam because blooming oranges dropping off the neighbor's trees which they are dave leave your cows off anyway so um maybe we should be back in the car anyway so um that's it for now and uh i'll show you when these things come out of the oven that's it so these are scones they're done like i said i don't usually go on time but rather how they look so let them cool down for a few minutes and they'll be ready to eat but they're so good because they're gooey because of the cheese and they're nice and light and fluffy and how easy was that so um these are some of the things that i've got for our food storage cupboard this week um these were on special for a dollar 20 each don't forget to write the date on them so that you know when they when you need to eat them by and eat the oldest ones first okay um and just be aware of some of the foods that have like sugar content in them these ones have 12 percent sugar um but i tell you when they're starving they'll eat it um so that's us for this week have a great week be kind to each other don't forget to keep stuff for your food storage cupboard and um we'll see you soon eh